Good, uh, good day to you this uh, August 15th, uh, 2023, Tuesday. Uh, my pastor, Neil Wemus, and this is your uh, third edition of Life Under the Water Tower. Um, just kind of looking at, th looking forward to th happenings here at St. Paul Lutheran Church here in Ida Grove and what we have planned for the week and weeks to come. Uh, so I'm going to bring up here on the screen, you can see, uh, kind of looking forward. The big thing is, as I keep talking about, is the Red Letter Challenge. And uh, I like this little quote. And each week there's going to be kind of another quote. And so this one you have, it says, We serve because we want to be more like Jesus. Uh, it's kind of really convenient and really wonderful. Uh, the scripture readings for the last several weeks, we've been going through the Gospel of Matthew, and we'll be doing that for a few more weeks. And we're folk, and a lot of the theme is about what it looks like to be a disciple, a lot, but the cost of being a disciple, um, the attitude that goes with being a disciple. And it fits very well because when we get to the Red Letter Challenge, it's going to be about what does it mean to be a disciple? And... And basically, it's right there. We serve because we want to be more like Jesus. And so, I mean, that's what discipleship is. Discipleship, to be a disciple means literally to be a follower of Jesus. Um, or in our modern tr sense, it means to be a student or a pupil. Um, and think about it. You know, a really good, an origin of this is so like, let's say your discipline is medicine or law. And you went to study law, you went to study medicine. You know, most people, when they do these things, they don't do it just for fun. They're not like, you know, I'm I'm bored. I'm going to go and do a bunch of debt. And yeah, I want to go to law school. You want to be a lawyer? Nah, just want to go to school. No one does that. When they go to law school, they intend to go use that degree. And so the same thing is we come and we gather for worship and we spend time in God's word. Our intent is to live in this word because... Yes, Christian. The word Christian literally means little Christ. So to be called a Christian is a desire to be more like Jesus. Because, well, he's Jesus. And the world needs us to be more like him. So... Uh, so here we are. So yeah, the September, Sunday, September 20th, 10th. We kick off the series of the Red Letter Challenge. So um, I look forward to kicking it off with all of you and getting it going. And um, if you'd like to get the books, you could purchase them either online. At, you can online at the redletterchallenge.com. You could purchase it from their site. You can buy them from Amazon. They are available. But I've heard there's some issues with delivery. But if you're patient and hold on, uh, we are planning to have many editions of this book here in the church. And we're going to be selling them for a, We're going to have them for a discounted price because the congregation is covering a portion of the book. And so you have to pay $10 as opposed to the $20 that many people are paying online. This is really helpful for some of you families who need to get multiple books for everyone uh, because... You know, like I said on Sunday, is don't share books. Have your own book because it's a journal. And if you look at the book, you'll see like a lot of little spots for you to write down your own thoughts, your own ex your own reflection, your own experiences. You can't do that for one another, for your your spouse or your siblings or your children, right? They have to write it for themselves. And it's confusing if you have your stuff and their stuff side by side. So have your own book because it's important for your overall experience and discipline of what we are going to be doing, living like Christians. So, all right, and there is a kid's version uh, for the Red Letter Challenge. So this is not just for adults. It is for kids as well. So again, I encourage you to get, if you have kids that are, I'd say basically fifth grade and younger, I encourage you to uh, get one of these books. All right. So there we go. So let's keep on, 
And then one more thing for this weekend is this weekend, August 19th, is going to be a uh, blessing of the backpacks. And so if you are going to school, whether that's high school, uh, middle school, elementary, even college, uh, bring your backpack. If you don't have a backpack when you're going to college or something like that, bring a notebook or something. Bring something that kind of identifies that you're going to school and bring it up and set it around the altar and we're going to pray uh, a blessing over it. And really, when, and really, it's not the pack pack that we're praying for, really. We're praying for you. Very similar to what we did a couple of weeks ago where we blessed the new Pew Bibles. We're praying that ultimately that those who make use of the Bible would be edified. And so similarly, we're praying that those who bear these backpacks that have all these school supplies and all that stuff... Um, would be a blessing that they'd learn throughout the school year, that they'd have a good school year, they make friends, and they befriend those people who need them, stand up for people who are, um, you know, left out, things like that. And um, we're also going to pray for teachers. So if you are a school staff, whether that's a teacher, a cook, uh, you know, janitor, or a secretary, whatever that may be, Come to church this weekend, and we'd love to pray a blessing on you and pray that you have a good year. Because it's a long, it's a long school year, and you can't get through it without Jesus. And so, we're gonna make sh sure to make an op uh, give the opportunity for you to start your year with Jesus. All right, so that's what I got for t as far as stuff for this coming weekend. Uh, there's the Bible studies. I talked about that in the last video. Um, today, I also like to kind of look forward to the services uh, for this coming weekend, the service itself. And for those of you, for, if in case you don't know, um, our church does have a YouTube channel. And so let me show you. It's, you know, you just look up, just look for St. Paul Lutheran Church, Ida Grove. And this it is, and so you'll see our communion wares are, is the um, the banner right there, and you can see our cross and uh, pastoral candle or Christ candle right there, and so you see all the sermons and some of the stuff that's going on. But something I started doing recently is doing these create these playlists, and it's to help you get ready for the Sunday that's to come. So, for example. This past week, uh, oops, wrong one. This past week, which was um, August 13th, you could see that there's a whole playlist dedicated to it. So you have Life Beneath the Water Tower, which we're doing right now. So looking forward to it. And so here is the, <coughs> excuse me. Um, so here's that video, but then you have the one of the then you have the hymns that we sang through the week last Sunday. So God, whose almighty word, praise the one who breaks the darkness. A naval record, the Naval Academy, uh, singing Eternal Father, strong to save. I think that's always great. That's great to watch. And so there's these nice hymns. I kind of like this. Jesus Savior, pilot me, um, is played alongside this uh, this boat battling the, the waters and then here was my sermon from this past sunday and here is a contemporary we don't we're not doing contemporary or praise band right now not until uh, the school year kicks off so september 10th praise band comes back but even still i'd like to keep that contemporary vibe going and so here's a song that kind of goes with the theme of the day and so right now i am working on building the list for this coming sunday uh, so August 20th and so you'll see there's here's a contemporary song act justly love mercy walk humbly uh, sung by Pat Barrett um, but the hymn of the day is when in the hour of darkest need and this is what I wanted to kind of highlight and so I have my Kindle open my Kindle reader and the reason is is I wanted to this this really good book if you really 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 want to know about the hymns get a hold of this book it's called the Compa Lutheran Service Book Companion to the Hymns. It's a two-volume set. And they go into the depth of every single hymn in our hymnal. And this one is really neat. This one in the hour of deepest need. Um, 
it's a hymn that came out in the 1500s uh in the like the early, and during the time of the reformation and there's a lot of dispute about it but what's really interesting is some of the hit stories revolving around this hymn so let me read this here uh, an attested, a better attested story related by Loxman dates from 1639 when the hymn, this hymn that we're talking about, when in the hour of deepest need, when the hymn was sung in Eilenburg under the direction of Archdeacon Martin Rinkart. When Swedish forces threatened the town, it is said that the singing impressed the Swedish commander so much that he greatly reduced the payment he was demanding to keep the town safe. Lauxman recounted several other incidents in, incidents in which people were saved after singing or playing this hymn. The most touching occurred in Pagau near Leipzig in, in 1644. The city refused to surrender to Swedish forces, and so the Swedish general ordered grenades to be launched into the city. The city was soon burning, and hailstorm and hailstorm hindered attempts to put out the fires. Women and children fled into the streets, then into the fields, where they were forced to spend a cold December night in the open. City leaders tried to open negotiations with the Swedish general, but for him, the time to negotiate was long past. Finally, the chief pastor of the city made a last desperate attempt walking through the Swedish onslaught with 12 boys clad in white all the way to the Swedish general's tent. Upon arrival, the pastors had the boys kneel and sing, when in the hour of deepest need. When they were finished, the pastor had barely begun to speak when the general rose and embraced him, recognizing him as an old school friend. In the end, the general ordered that food and supplies be provided to the city, and he treated the people well. The grateful populace continued to sing the hymn every Sunday at the start of the afternoon service, a practice that was still current in the 19th century when this incident was reported. It's kind of a cool story. And there's a lot of cool stories like this when it comes to hymns. And so here's the words of it. When in the hour of deepest need, we know not where to look for aid. When days and nights of anxious thought, no help or counsel yet have brought. Then is our comfort this alone, that we may meet before your throne. To you, O faithful God, we cry for rescue in our misery. For you have promised, Lord, to heed your children's cries in time of need. Through him whose name alone is great, our Savior and our Advocate. And so we came, O God, today, and all our woes before you lay. For sorely tried, cast down we stand, perplexed by fears on every hand. O oh, from our sins, Lord, turn your face, Absolve us through your boundless grace. Be with us in your anguish still. Free us at last from every ill. So we with all our hearts each day, To you our glad thanksgiving pay. Then walk obedient to your word, And now and ever praise you, Lord. I mean, the very core of this is when we are broken, to remind us to rely on God and God alone, no matter in the hour of deepest need. Rely on him. You hear that story of those being grenaded in that city, yet that would make you fall to your knees in despair. And this ties in with the gospel lesson, which will be for this Sunday, which is the, the Canaanite woman coming to Jesus because her daughter is on the point of death begging in her hour of deepest need. So often life gets so comfortable and we look 
This actually ties very closely with what we talked about this past Sunday and Peter walking on water and Peter failing to look at Jesus in his while he's walking on water getting focused on the wind. When we so often become like Peter and looking at everything but Jesus, he what we're going to hear is with this woman is she looks to Jesus. A reminder to us when our world is falling apart, when the foundation we stand upon is crumbling, we look to Jesus. We come to the one true God because he alone helps us, not just in our great needs, but in our every need. And sometimes, yes, God lets us hit rock bottom to wake us up to get our attention and tell us hey you're not going to survive the way you're going and sometimes he needs to give us tough love to get our eyes right to set our focus on him so that's what we have for this coming sunday and so blessings on your week in jesus name amen